The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the March 7th, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's have an extraordinary one. You know, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that everything in life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstances of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question, but you can't call in, you can always send me send me an email. Now, send that off early, if you would, steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, inside our Tigers, down well, then any. In every ping, will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Uh, right now, you get got all the U.S. indices that we track. They are trading the upside. Same thing with regard to the sectors inside the S&P 500. We have the Dow up 168 points. That's about four tenths percent, nine tenths for the S&P, 45 points, one and a quarter for the NASDAQ 100, 221. The Russell's up 17. Semi's up 146. That's a 3 percent move there. Trandy's up 169. Gold is up 60 cents. Silver's up nine pennies. Lake's Recruit is off 67 pennies. Natural gas down six cents in a 30 year treasury. Print out at 121.18. That is off one tick. Let's figure out what all this means by looking at that. Start off by taking a look at the equity futures out here. Let's look at the daily and the weekly. Just kind of refresh our memories exactly where we're at on a Thursday, what to prepare for for uh, tomorrow, what to prepare for on Monday. So here, the upper left-hand side is going to be the ES Mini. The lower left-hand side daily time frame, that is. Lower left-hand side is going to be the weekly time frame. So all the weekly charts along the bottom, the weekly charts along the bottom, the only only March, uh, the only the ES Mini is one that I get enough data to include the current contract. The others are the continuous contracts. Doesn't matter. They are still providing the same data. What's the same data? Well, first of all, the ES Mini will negate its road momentum indicator top if price closes above the high from March the 4th. That high is 51.57.75. So far, we've tested that. If we close below that, that pattern still is it, it, it's still present, even if price closes above the uh, the uh, uh, the top of its daily profile, fifty one twenty eight. The NQ now the day uh, weekly time frame a a TD nine count top is going to complete this week. Now, what this is going to help us with is whatever the high is this week, if we wake up on Sunday night, well, not wake up, if we, uh, well, whatever it is that we're up, if we start to take a look at futures come Sunday evening, and futures are trading above whatever the high of this week is, and that does, it just says be, what the signal could be telling us is that the T could be telling us is that the TD9 count for its weekly time frame is going to fail. And if that's going to fail, we've got a large move uh, still in store for us there. So we'd want to watch that. In the case of the NQ, the NQ does not have a top. Right now, price is trading above its green oscillator and change line. It's trading into its swing time, all time swing point high from March the 4th. Odds favor now, as long as price can remain above 18,234. We're at 18,268 right now. Price should go ahead and tag that high, at least tag that high. No top 
still inside the NQ on the daily time frame. Inside the Dow and on the weekly time frame, also this will complete a TD9 count top this week. So it's going to be whatever the high of this week is. We come in Sunday night, futures open up, and they start trading above these levels. Again, it's a weekly time frame. So it's really where do equity futures close next Friday. But still, we'd have some kind of indication with regard to the strength of the market. Right now, inside the NQ and the ES, well, the ES are still a top, but we'll see where today closes. The NQ there is not. The Dow itself is consolidating with inside its daily profile. It's got support at 38.370, resistance at 38.920. That's the one that's really kind of suggesting caution because it's cooled off out there. And if it's cooling off, that's giving us a signal that maybe global capital is starting to cool off a little bit as well. Maybe they're aware of those TD9 counts out there. And we got a TD9 count top that's going to complete inside the Dow. The actual high of that pattern was three weeks ago. So it would need to be, you need to see futures trade above that high. That high, by the way, from three weeks ago was 39,343. If future were trading above that come Sunday evening, boy, tell us about a strong upward momentum move. Inside the Russell 2000, turns out that uh, today uh, has triggered a wave number seven and it has triggered bar number nine of a TD9 count. The Russell 2000 should top between today or tomorrow. There's also Rhodes momentum indicator signal that's present. My preference would be to see a bearish reversal candle confirm that pattern, but you still have the other two and we would respect those. That's wave number seven again and a TD9 count. Now on its weekly time frame, there is no topping pattern here. And this weekly time frame is just simply all out bullish with price above a green oscillator and change line and with price above the top of its profiles. So that's what's going on when we take a look at what's going on in the daily and weekly time frames for the U.S. equity future contract. Let's go take a look at what's going on under the covers. And to do that, we dial down to those intraday time period charts. So on the intraday time period, we've got a five-hour time frame chart. So let's just go through each of them, especially since we're up towards these highs out here. So make, we make sure we pick up all the signals. The signals here on the um, uh, five-hour time frame, the top was formed with a Rhodesman indicator top. That was at 500, 500. That was at 5 p.m. on March the 4th. That is a key high. That high out there is 51.57.75. A close above that negates that signal, probably sets up a larger A to B equals CD pattern, with the B point being down here on the five hour time frame, 5 p.m. last evening out there. So watch the high. This is a key we're trading inside right now. Watch that 51.57.75. Now, this bar right now for five hour time frame completes at 2 p.m. So it doesn't matter what it's doing at 11.13, it matters what it's doing at 2 p.m. If we look at the four hour time frame chart, price has made its way back to its TD nine count breakdown resistance level. So we're up at resistance, which is at 51.57.75. No surprise there. Um, but it was the TD nine count that identified that level for us. That's also a Rhodes momentum indicator top on the four hour time frame chart. The four hour time frame bar right now completes at 2 p.m. as well. So watch 51.57.75 at two o'clock this afternoon. If price is above that, you know that you've got a top, couple of topping patterns that have been negated. How about the two hour time? Time frame chart for the ES mini. Also 51.57.75. It is also Rhodes momentum indicator signal. There is again no topping pattern other than price getting back to resistance. When you get back to resistance, that in fact can be a top. But if we're going to see that top, we're going to see that in the other intraday charts out there. So we know that that is a real key level, that 51.57.75 area. I've already been through that enough for you to say, you know, that's the key area. If we look at a 60 minute time frame chart, that's in my lower level. Let me just expand it out. It has an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. It has completed the one to one move. However, if we take a look at the strength on this C to D leg, you always maintain the, well, you don't have to do it, but I'm going to suggest that you do it. You maintain the exact angle of A to B as you do on C to D. Because if you don't, you're going to miss out on a lot of great information. When you are in this leg here right now, the C to D leg, much stronger than that A to B leg out there. And that suggests that we do more than a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD to the upside. C Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's get into some requests. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to get way behind. I don't want to do that. We can always come back and try to do that same full review. We didn't really get to the intraday, the, the even the shorter time frames for the ES Mini. Uh, but we can try to do that same thing for the NQ. I think you kind of get the feel, and we know what number to the upside that we want to be paying attention to at today's close. But yesterday, one of the questions that came in from uh, John from Philly was to take a look at the New York Stock Exchange, its top 100 U.S. Uh, stocks as well as its top 100 international stocks. I use a different data feed in order to uh, get this information. This snapshot was taken an hour ago or so. What we can see here is that um, there was a Wave 7 top. That's being negated. There was a Rhodesman Dimindicator top. Uh, it looks like uh, the trading day from 2, 4, 6, about 8 days ago. And so if price closes above that high, uh, the top 100 stocks inside the New York Stock Exchange will just simply be all out bullish. If you take a look at the international stocks, they don't have any kind of a top. In fact, yesterday negated their top um, a topping pattern. It had a Rhodes Mentum indicator signal that lasted for one single day out there. So that tells you about a strong move there. So I did want to, I did uh, provide those charts to everybody in the den yesterday afternoon. One uh, That was yesterday's charts. Now you've got today's charts, or at least as of about an hour ago. Uh, so that takes care of that set of charts. Let's go take a look at the AGEN. This is for Dan inside the Tiger's Den. AGEN is a ticker symbol. And here what we can see is just simply a consolidation with inside its daily time frame. It's got support at 65 cents. It has resistance at 84 cents out there. Uh, if we take a look at the weekly time frame, as a wave number seven bottom, that is letter G, which also is consolidated with inside its profile, and that's between 60 cents and 85 cents. So really we're at 60 or 65 and 84 and 85 out there. I mean, that is your consolidation zone. Now, the real key level here for Dan or anybody that is trading a gen or is trying to take a long position, the real key level here is going to end up being the monthly oscillator and change line. That's your very right-hand panel. You can see how for basically 
basically the last year and a half or so, that level has been tested many times intramonth, and it at, by the end of the month, it has failed. Right now, that is printed at 79 cents. If we get a close above that on a monthly basis, I say Agen has some action to the upside. We probably have some bottom patterns on the uh, daily and the weekly. Of course, we already have those patterns, especially if, if these uh, uh, consolidations hold here. So that's what we've got. We take a look at AGEN. Hope that provides you with the information you're looking for. Duncan Steve wanted to take a look at ENVX. So let's pull that chart up on our screen out here. Um, here we go. Make sure I'm in the right spot. There we go. So we take a look at this. This has a Rogemontum indicator bottom. That formed out here on February the 6th. This is being tested as we speak right now. I mean, price is back inside this candle. That candle did volume of 3.9 million shares. Yesterday, the volume on this was 2.8. The day before was uh, 3.5. Uh, today so far, you're at 700, so that's a couple million share a day. Again, going after the last, well, really going after that swing point. That's got 3.9 or 4 million shares out there. Price is also inside this bullish structured zone, the buy zone, of its daily pro profile. And that's between 927 and 960 out there. The price did close below 927, volume or not out here. Duncan, I would say price would go tag and test that swing low from February the 6th. It's a real possibility, especially if on a weekly basis we close below 952. So tomorrow you get a close below 952. The weekly chart would be below its red oscillator and change line, below profile support. That's opening up the door to take a look at 833 out there. And on a monthly basis right now, we're trading below the bottom of its monthly profile. So it's really all about how strong is this bullish structured zone out there. So far, it has held up. It's held up any time over the last couple of weeks out there. And that would then tell you if it fails at 927, there is your chink or chunk in the armor out there. So that's what we've got. We take a look at ENVX. S&P inside the Tiger Sim wants to take a look at natural gas. So let's go take a look at natural gas has completed the one-to-one -one A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. We'll get those charts up here momentarily. Um, and although I don't have that drawn in there, I can draw that in for you if you'd like. So you can take a look at the A to B equals CD pattern. So if you give me a moment. So this has got a buy the D point pattern. Uh, a to B is going to look like this. I'm just simply going to copy that. I'm going to take this over to that C point. That completed. Now, notice how, on this case here, we were taking a look at a 60-minute time frame chart for the ES mini. We're talking about maintaining that exact same line on A to B as you do to C to D. See how this completed, and it was to the right-hand side. It was on the weak side of that line. In other words, B to C was much weaker than that A to B move out there. That's an indication that it's likely going to just simply uh, kind of peter out at that one-to-one -one level, which this is basically done. We don't have any kind of bearish reversal, can but what we do have is a new profile out there. So for those of you that are interested in getting in on the long side for natural gas right now you've got um, you got two two different patterns that you could consider one pattern is the two bar knee-jerk reaction loan that's going to complete today that would be one pattern the second pattern would be buying support and support right now is between 176 and 180 out there 180 being the bottom of its new profile now I had mentioned a two-bar knee-jerk reaction low as one possibility. Let's pull over the daily time frame charts and take a look at it and try to factor in the, what are those odds. Since we have come off of the bottom, since it's formed that by the D-point pattern out there, we have seen two such retracements. Both now, if I, if I go back up here, we take a look at the daily time frame chart out here. What I don't know is when those retracements were being done. It would take too much time to try to look at intraday uh, charts to see if um, – you know, if there was some kind of bottoming pattern there. But basically, you don't even really need to do that, right? We know about in a strong bull market, we don't know if it's a strong bull market or not just yet, but we do know that typical pull moves to the downside in a bull market are going to last two to four bars. In this case here, we can see they've been two bars. So somebody who really has a hankering for wanting to get in a natural gas, maybe at the end of the day, you begin a uh, position. You make sure you use a wide enough stop out there. That wide enough stop says it's got to be under a buck seventy six. Uh, because that's the red oscillator and change line for the daily time frame out there. We can see on a weekly basis that oscillator and change line has acted as resistance as well. The 30-minute time frame chart is going to go ahead and complete a TD9 count bottom uh, at, uh, at 1130, so in another four and a half minutes out there. There's a pattern. There's a time frame to watch, S&P, is a 30-minute time frame chart for natural gas. The last time that this formed a uh, TD9 count bottom was back here at 2100 hours last evening. That went ahead and uh, made a high red right in 
into resistance at the top of its profile out there. So you could be actually getting the bottoming signal right now. So pay close attention to that 30 minute. What do you want to see on that 30 minute time frame? You want to start seeing um, uh, price closing above the prior bars high out there and not closing below the prior bar. Uh, so that's one thing to be taken a look at. You can do that even on a shorter term, term, term time frame to see if you get some kind of additional information there. So S&P, I hope that helps you out with regard to natural gas. I'm going to close out these charts and simply because they take up a number of resources. Now we're going to take a look. We're going to we're going to go drive up to Starbucks out there. We're going to go drive to Starbucks. The person who's driving is the Dunkin' Donuts guy. That's right. Duncan Steve inside the Tiger's Den. He apparently likes a lot of coffee, Starbucks and Dunkin' Donuts. Let's get over to those Starbucks charts out here. Give me a moment. We'll get to them. I believe they are right here. And yes, they are. So now we take a look at Starbucks. Uh, what Stevie is looking at is the fact that today is going to become bar number eight of a TD9 count pattern out there. And tomorrow we'll complete the pattern as long as Starbucks closes below $92.46. So that's what you've got going on the daily time frame. We come back from this uh, break out here. We'll do a little bit more of Java drinking, so to speak. We'll see what's going on in the weekly and the monthly time frame. Of course, folks, I'd love to hear from you. We're going to look at the UVXY, the Advanced Client Oscillator. Uh, we're going to take a look at SMCI, Snow, BR. And that's it. But I'd love more requests. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
welcome back, folks. So it turns out that uh, Duncan is a uh, uh, really not a drinker of Starbucks. He's just looking to make an investment. What a trade. So you, that opportunity looks like it's going to present itself uh, to you. So when I pulled the chart back, I also noticed, Steve, that price is trading into its swing point from October the 3rd. It hasn't gotten all the way down to the bottom, but it has tested the top of that swing point. So far, it's rejected that. The top of that swing point is at uh, 9107. Now, there was volume of 6.7 million shares. Today, this has already done over 2 million, 3 million shares out there. So this is, even though it may reject it with price, it's not going to reject it with volume and even though we got bar number eight today odds favor that that at least that high gets tested again if price closes above it that's the high from october 4th and again that high out there was at 9107 now it's only bar number eight that's completing today so this pattern may not complete steve until um monday of uh, next week out there on a weekly basis then i'd say with it pushing into that swing point with volume it certainly is not today if I look at the uh, weekly time frame, the weekly time frame also testing that swing point, which was a TD9 count bottom on a weekly basis. It was 33 million shares. So far, Starbucks is at ah, 37 million shares. So you're pushing that swing point with volume. Steve-O, this is really telling us that that swing should get tested. So I would say that that low, that low being 89.21, should get tested by Monday out there. It's not a guarantee, but boy, everything is pointing to that being the likely outcome for Starbucks. So I hope that helped you out uh, out there, and uh, thanks so much for playing along with Stevie. Nitram wants to take a look at UVXY. Basically, that is dynamite out there. And uh, I mean the type of dynamite that could explode in your hands. But take a, this is hard to trade. So I'll just share with you what I can share with you. First of all, the important thing for people to know is that the UVXY is not being traded based on what you see in this volatility index. It just isn't. Why? Because it's holding. So I've pulled up the holdings. These are as of last night. And you can see that UVXY, you can see it's waiting here. It has really two futures contracts. It's got both the March and the April. Uh, March is being phased out out there. Don't pay attention to those percentages because they'd add up to more than 100% out there. So I'm not sure uh, what, the, what this uh, entity is doing with regard to its math. Uh, but it's crazy math out there. But those are the two contracts that are in play. And that's very important to know out there when you're trading, when you're, you know, I think it's important to understand what's going on. When we take a UVXY, all that I can share with you right now is you have resistance at 729, 748, and 767 to the upside. Uh, it looks like UVXY, UVXY might be something somebody would want to entertain out there. Why? Because on a weekly basis, we're going to complete a TD9 count bottom pattern this week. Turns out it's also got a Rhodes Bentham indicator signal. And right now you got a bullish engulfing candle. And that would confirm that price should be moving up towards 907 over time. That's the UVXY. We take a look at the daily and the weekly time frame chart. But again, it's really a matter of understanding what's going on on the on the futures contracts. Here, for example, is the April contract, which makes up probably 75% of it. And here, when I take a look at the uh, bottom, when I take a look at the daily time frame, I don't have a bottoming signal. But on the weekly, we do. And that's that TD9 count out there with regard to the April contract. How do you trade UVXY based on that? You know, it's pretty tough. And I'll, I'll switch over. The best trading system I've found out here, well, I'll, I'll give you a couple things to pay attention to. So you do want to pay attention to, you know, trends is making higher lows, higher and so forth. Uh, but now I've switched over to the black background charts. And then the black background charts, over the years, we've had calls about this. And what I found is typically the best out here, especially in a trending market. Right now, we really don't have that trend when I take a look at this product out here. Well, we, we can see it is using a very short term time frame and utilizing profiles. Utilizing those profiles to assist you with your trading. This is a three-minute time frame chart out here. Um, you know, so I suggest I would suggest uh, getting access to that if you're going to really be an intraday trader. You want to understand where those profile levels are at, uh, whether we have uh, whether it's giving you bullish signs or. Um, um, or, or bear signs out there and just find that kind of short term time frame out there. So Nitram, that's the best I could do for you with regard to UVXY. I hope that helps you out and uh, best of luck to you. Peter wrote in, want to take a look at the New York Stock Exchange, the advanced client oscillator. That's really panel number three out here. It's the one that absolutely says advanced decline oscillator. So I've tried to make it as easy as I can. Above that happens to be the advanced decline line, which is rising. 
So that most certainly is not bear. It's just not back at its all-time high. That took place way back in 2021, back in the uh, November time frame, but it is rising. But to answer Peter's question, and his question was this, is the New York Stock Exchange Advanced Client Oscillator giving us any information? And my answer to that is absolutely not. Peter, this has been going back and forth above and below the uh, at zero threshold level, where right now the information that's in there, for me, it's not giving me a very clear signal. What's the current status? The current status it's above the zero line right now that would give buyers the edge out there and i don't see anything here to um to negate that but it's just been hobbling back and forth back and forth maybe that has something to do with the fact that markets are trying to rise with a spot volatility index that is below i'm sorry that's above the 50-day exponential moving average so here's the current condition but i don't believe it's really providing us with a ton of information but if i had to lean on one side versus the other right now it would be the bullish side as far as the signal that it's producing for us. But then uh, we get to that, and then we take a look at the spot volatilities. Okay, we take a look at the futures contracts out here. Spot volatilities still above that 50-day exponential moving average, 50-day 13.87. Spot right now at 14.38. Why is that important? Well, why that's important is because typically the way that the spot volatilities and the S&P trade, um, the green boxes out here, which we're showing, show your periods of time for the S&P 500 when that spot volatilities is below the 50-day. The red boxes are when it's above the 50-day out there. And so right now, but no, it's not working. It's just that, you know, there are two periods of time when it's not working. You have to identify those and just simply put them on the uh, bookshelf. And that's where this is as we speak right now. We've got to utilize our other tools. We've got plenty of other tools out there. So let's go to our next request. The next request was to take a look at uh, SMCI. This is for Electric Light Orchestra inside the Tigers. Now we're going to switch our panels again, get back to those white charts. So if you give me a moment here, we'll have those on the screen for you. You should see three time frames. You see daily. You still see that VIX up there. But momentarily, we'll get that switched over to SMCI. Now, uh, I don't believe there was a question out here. What I can share with you is SMCI has a wave number seven top that will be triggered today as long as price does not spike above 1169.50. Now, what that should result in ELO is a pullback to support. And that first level of support is going to be that daily green oscillator and change line, currently printed at 1050 and 73 cents. If price were to close below that, that would tell us that SMCI has lost its momentum, and that would also suggest a pullback towards 785.36. That's the top of its current profile out there. The weekly time frame is just simply bullish, period, end of story, as is the uh, monthly. So I can't be too hopeful about that uh, wave seven signal out there. Now, a bearish reversal candle would confirm a Rhodesman to indicator top. But again, that top would also just uh, tell us the same thing, which is get back to support. We know that's at that oscillator and change line, and then below that would be the top of a profile. So ELO, um, that's what I see when I take a look at SMCI, um, and I hope that that helps you out. Duncan wanted to take a look at snow out there, so let's go ahead and pull that ticker symbol up, SNOW. I see we're going to the break here in just a few seconds, so we'll come back and we'll review snow, but just instantly as we take a look at it, your below daily profile, and it's red oscillator and change on your below weekly profile. That suggests that it might want to pull back to its breakout level. That's at about a buck 42, 142.44 to be exact. Steve Rhodes with TFNM. We'll finish looking at snow as soon as we come back from this. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a snowflake SNOW as a ticker symbol out here. We don't see any kind of a bottoming pattern. It looks to me like this next uh, stop is at the 159.51 level. That's its next TD nine count uh, break uh, down area out there on the daily time frame. The weekly time frame, 142.44, is where it wants a target. And on the monthly time frame, not enough data for me to really comment on that. So that's what I see when I take a look at the snow out there, Duncan. Hope that that helps you out. Tim wrote in, he wants to take a look at the ticker symbol BR. So let's get over to those charts out there and see what it is doing. Tim is looking for support and resistance. We can easily provide that. Your support is going to be 202.89. That's the top of its daily profile. Since that's the top of the daily profile, I don't have any other profile levels in the daily time frame to give you resistance. So for that, what we would do is say, say your resistance level right now, since there was a bear sash candle that formed a few days ago, above this area where we're at, that would be the high from March 4th, which could be or should be a resistance area, 205.62. And then above that, you've got a TD9 count top that took place on January 30th. That would be another resistance point at 210.24. On a weekly time frame, your resistance is going to be the oscillator and change line. That's at 206.29. Support would be between 194.89 and 197.99. On a monthly basis, uh, you've got a TD9 count top that's going to complete at the end of March, and that would suggest a pullback to support, which would be around 191.70, but that number is going to change out there. So that's what I see when I take a look at BR, support and resistance. We've successfully provided that to you. Thanks so much for writing in. Uh, we had a request to take a look at VKTX out there, and I did not write down who made that request. My apology. But the question was entry areas and entry point. So you've got a TD9 count top that took place out here. That formed on the trade Trading day of February 28th out there. Price right now is below its green oscillator and change line, trading with inside its profile. So the easy answer to your question is one possible entry area will be the bottom of its daily profile, which is support. And that's at 66.73 out there. The weekly time frame suggests that we will get a confirmed TD9 count top this week. That pattern will complete next week. And man, that suggests that price could pull all the way back to 42 bucks. I don't want to go there right now. Why? Because first price would have to break through the daily level of support. And that would be at 65.673 out there. So um, as price approaches 66.73, 
whoever wrote in, I apologize because I didn't write it down. Please write back. Let's take a look. Let's see if there's any kind of intraday signal or something to assist us because we're a little bit concerned about that weekly TD9 count pattern and it's moved back towards that 42 level out there. So I hope that helps you out. Mimi wrote in and wanted to take a look at the profile levels for the GDX. So if we take a look at that, the GDX is going to pop up on our screen. What do we know about it? Well, profile levels, Mimi, on the daily time frame are well below price. When I say well below, we're trading at 2953 and the top of the daily profiles at 2693 so you can call that old support you call that potential support out there um, if we look at the, where's the upside resistance area on the GDX, it's 31.97. Uh, we're in bar number five of a TD nine count, so there's no topping signals. We're uh, trading into kind of this wild swing point out here from the trading day of January the 12th. Volume there was 29 million shares. We're trading into it with about um, about the same volume out there. So you'd really love to see price close today above 29.56 out there. We're 29.53 right now. All right. So the weekly time frame, Mimi, you're in luck. Here we've got the profiles. In fact, price is trading into the sell zone. And that sell zone is between 29.28 and 29.79. The reason it's a zone is because that's a bearish structured profile. The center closer in proximity to the top than it is to the bottom. So price is trading into that area out there. So that says, okay, we've got a, a bit of a, a congestion zone. And on a week monthly time frame chart, uh, we're trading right up into the top of its profile as well. So we're trading into profile resistance. What's going on on the intraday charts? Excellent question. Glad that I asked that of myself. And now let's go look at the 30 minute time frame. What do we see out here? We see a Rosman indicator top. That took place at the uh, 1030 bar out here. Now, price is above profile levels out there. So, Mimi, only a close below 2906 would suggest that the GDX is getting ready to perhaps pull back out there. So that's what it would take, 2906, a close blow on a 30-minute basis out there. You do have a, a short-term top, but price is just trading sideways out there. So maybe we don't get too much more action out of the GDX today, considering we're in the sell zone on the weekly time frame. But Mimi... We get a close above 29.79 come tomorrow. That would be a bullish outcome, and that would bring that 31.97 level into play. So thank you so much for your request. I'm sure others out there were wondering the same thing. And let's go to Lee's favorite stock. LB is getting a breakout today inside of Uranium, ticker symbol URA out there. His question is, where is the next resistance level? Well, the daily time frame, as you know, Lee, you are blowing through that, and its resistance level is not a profile area. It's a TD9 count breakdown, and that's a 31 42 and that is a likely outcome because the top of the weekly bullish structured profile is at 29.83 the oscillator and change line is at 30 bucks out there so i'd say we're going between 29.83 and 31.42 is your next upside area now the fly in the financial ointment for uranium happens to be the monthly time frame chart, Lee. I'll pull this back just a, a tad. You can see that this has a completed Rosman indicator top. Now, the benefit there, or the good thing there, or the bullish outcome there, is that price has pulled back, tested, and rejected that green oscillator and change line. So the monthly top signal is somewhat neutralized, but it's still in place out here. So you just have to, and we're still inside its profile, so you still have to be, you know, cautious. And that top of that profile, by the way, 3016. So we're all about the 30s out here. It looks to me like that's where price wants to head to. So LB, I hope that helps you out. And as always, thank you for your request. Next request coming in from Hector and the fuel injector. That would be Patty. And he wants to take a look at the U.S. dollar index. We talked about that A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. That was courtesy of Hector, by the way. Now let's go ahead and pull those charts up here. So in order to get A to B equals CD to the downside, let's just open up that daily time frame chart. So that's all we're looking at. All it needs is a a close below 10380 I'm sorry 10387 today and we're 10289 now Hector's question is is this likely to do more than a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD to the downside and the answer to that right now just following along A to B equals CD folklore language the answer is no the reason the answer is no is because the retracement, that B to C retracement, was a 61.8 retracement. It was really 64%. That's kind of the normal. So remember, in A to B equals CD patterns, if I haven't mentioned this, I'll mention it. And that is that 40% of the 60% of the time, it will do a one-to-one -one move. That's the odds. I Those are not my odds. Those came from uh, Larry Pesadunto's book, you know, published back in the 80s out there. I'm going to believe – I'm going to – 
I'm going to believe it. My eyes have visually seen that as well, although I haven't kept track. But so 60% of the time, it makes a one-to-one. Well, geez, 60%. What happens to the other 40%? That's the whole reason why you don't want to just buy or sell the one-to-one. You want to get some other kind of signals, even if it's some intraday signals to assist you with that move out there. So I don't really know where it's going to go, but you were asking as a you know, this pattern suggests it will do more than a one-to-one. And my answer to that is no, it doesn't. However, what does suggest that is if we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, price couldn't bust them to the upside, couldn't get through that descending trend line. So maybe what price is going to do is get down to the rising trend line. And Hector and Patty, that's in the 101 area. And if we do that, to get to 101, we've got to do a 1 to 1.618 or a 1 to 2A to B equals CD. So you were the one that was perceptive enough to identify that this was going to go ahead and form an A to B equals CD to the downside. You were right. So maybe you're going to be right about that 1.618 move as well. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We get back from this break. we got to quickly go take a look at Marvell, ABGO, and CLF. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. These next two instruments have earnings reports uh, after the bell. And uh, so Jim Belay inside the Tiger Stens trying to get some type of sense for where the product, where this might head to. So if we take a look at Marvell, Marvell does not have a uh, daily topping pattern at all. It's trading above yesterday's high. It's trading below profile, trading below a green oscillator and change line. Jim Belay, I don't know where it's headed to, but this is a bullish signal out there. So there's nothing to suggest that this is topping today. If we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, that's also being reiterated last week. 
Price negated a Rhodesman indicator top. We're trading above last week's high. That is a bullish signal. Looks to me like we've got an A to B equals CD to the upside. The volume on the weekly candle, just to take a look at it, was 68 million. Last week it was passed with 59 million. So far this week we are at 53 million out there. So that, even though you pass with light volume, is it's a strong move out there. That suggests upside movement. And the same for the monthly time frame chart. So Marvell is looking like that thing wants to trade higher. Uh, if we take a look at Abgo, Broadcom out here. Broadcom does have a Rhodesman indicator top, but price is above profile. Price is above that green oscillator and change on. Its message is neutral, Jambalaya. The weekly time frame has got a TD9 count uh, uh, top that's likely to form. Uh, by next week, complete the following week out there. Monthly time frame chart looks pretty good. So you're you got a top, but you're neutral on the daily time frame. You got a top that likely is coming over the next couple of weeks out here. So I would say the chart that looks better was Abgo. I'm sorry, was Marvell versus Abgo out there? But um, you know this one could absolutely trade higher as well. Uh, let's go take a look at ticker symbol CLF. That's for SNP inside the Tiger's Den. We take a look at it. It is trading right up into resistance. That's a TD9 count breakdown resistance level of 2094. That's on the daily time frame. What I don't see out here is any kind of a uh, top. Um, and uh, so it looks like this wants to trade higher on the weekly time frame. It's got resistance up here at the trading. It's got really the resistance level, if you will. Is at the high from December 22nd, the week of December 22nd, 2141 is the uh, number out there. So this still looks very bullish. And the monthly chart looks bullish with regard to CLF. Uh, so we did get through everything. Dan, I think you got the uh, VFC charts out here. Here they are. I'll just leave them up on the uh, screen out there. Looks like VFC wants to go target 1704 to 1721. Folks, stay tuned for all the great programming. I'll be back with you on fantastic Friday. Please have a terrific Thursday. Be safe out there. Take care.